Hey there everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we are so excited to share with you our review of Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Nintendo Switch. Now this review was actually written by our lovely video producer, Alex Olney, but here he just thinks he's too cool, too high and mighty to actually narrate and edit his own review, I guess, so, so I did it. I narrated his review, and I cut up his gameplay, all for your viewing pleasure. So without further ado, let's check out the review. Despite being the glimmering jewel of the GameCube's launch, Luigi's Mansion has enjoyed relatively few sequels for such a beloved Mario spin-off. The 3DS had a pretty well-liked sequel, and the original even had a second chance on the handheld with a remake. Now it's time for a true home console follow-up with Luigi's Mansion 3, but can it stand up to the classic in all its glorious originality? The game starts off as you might expect. Luigi's been sent an invitation to come and stay as a VIP guest in a luxury hotel. And if that sounds familiar, well, you're not crazy. He's not alone this time though, as Mario, Princess Peach, and a small group of toads are also along for the ride. And when they arrive, everything seems pretty peachy to the participants. To us players, however, the red flags are all over the place. None of the staff seem to be normal. For starters, they're all wearing creepy masks, and their lack of feet make them look as if they walked in from Fire Emblem Awakening's battlefields. It's almost as if the whole hotel is haunted and populated by, dare I say, ghosts! And at this point, it's, it shouldn't really be a spoiler, but it, it is. There's The whole premise of the game is ghosts. Lo and behold, it comes to light that there are some shady events transpiring. Namely, that the hotel's owner, as well as the oh-so-gracious King Boo, has lured and trapped Luigi's pals inside these paintings. Our old friend Egad has also befallen this same fate, so it's up to Luigi to search the many floors of the hotel, free his friends, suck up ghosts, and sweep up the ungodly amount of loose change lying around, because we all know ghosts don't actually need money. And a new Luigi's Mansion wouldn't be right without a few new inventions. So this time, our old pal Luigi is wielding the Poltergust G00, which is able to produce an exact replica of Luigi, made entirely out of nondescript jelly. That's not all it can do though. Luigi is now able to fire suction plunger shots, emit a dark light to reveal hidden objects, and even slam ghosts about the place like they're made of wet tissue paper. Seriously, what are those ghosts made of? What's in there? As we alluded to before, the main event in this new arsenal is the flubbery boy known as Guigi, who has the abilities of Luigi, as well as the means to pass through grates and other spaces that are too small even for our lanky pal. Guigi's molecular makeup does come at a cost though, as although he appears even more powerful than Luigi, he does share the same weakness as Sonic the Hedgehog and Charizard. Just water. The little sticky boy doesn't like water. Get him even slightly dewy and he'll melt away into a useless pile of slop before awkwardly slurping himself back up into the poltergust. You use Guigi either when Luigi simply can't traverse an obstacle, or in a few instances where two bodies are required to make progress, such as a door that needs to be raised and held open through a mechanism that you just simply can't reach and get through the door at the same time. At first, the situations that demand the gooey cousin seem a bit too obvious, giving the impressions that they've been shoehorned in, a gimmick to grab players' attention that doesn't necessarily fit the gameplay especially as only one of the green boys can be controlled at any one time. As the game goes on, however, you'll be surprised and pleased at the clever ways the two can work together to overcome obstacles, and this sense of building wonderment is something that rings true for the gameplay as a whole. To begin with, you may be a little bored if you're a Luigi's Mansion master. The game is of a slower pace, and the solutions to most of the mandatory puzzles probably won't tax you as much at all. Get further into the game though, and things start to take a pleasing turn for the better. Simple puzzles are still present, but they're often presented in a way that forces you to think twice, and sometimes even second guess yourself. We found puzzles that seemed completely impossible at first glance, only for the solution to be so achingly simple that we felt embarrassed even though we were in our own homes. In terms of the main gameplay, the solutions are fairly simple, but often clever in their execution. 
If you want a bit more challenge, however, you can find it with the hidden gems. Each floor of the hotel has six gems hidden somewhere, and although you'll probably stumble across one, two, maybe three in your first run through a floor, the rest are often extremely well hidden. Sometimes you'll even be shown the gem, which is only just out of reach. And there were instances where we went mad trying to find out how to get our grubby white gloved mitts on them. But the sense of accomplishment for finally being able to snag that one last gem that's been eluding you is pretty difficult to top. It's all optional as well, so if you're not keen on that higher level of difficulty, you can just pass them all by. All of this would be for nothing if the puzzles weren't fun. However, and as you've probably already guessed from the positive vibes of this review, they're great fun. Couple these brain teasers with bouts of scuffling with haunting spirits, and you'll be having yourself a jolly old jaunt through this gigantic beast of a building. But that's not what Luigi's Mansion is most remembered for, is it? Who remembers how many pink ghosts were in the dining hall, or where to find the most pearls? No. What we and everyone else on the planet remembers are the portrait ghosts, and their triumphant return in the form of boss ghosts is where the gameplay shines the brightest. A medieval knight, a prehistoric caveman, a literal pirate shark? The boss ghosts are, without a doubt, the highlight of the whole game. Now, we don't want to give anything away here, but suffice to say, it's amazing just how many creative and ingenious boss fights are possible using little more than a vacuum cleaner. Each contest is memorable, dramatic, and even decently challenging, and completing them will grant you a new button for the elevator that'll allow you to make your way up to the next floor. Every boss is brimming with personality and leaves you desperate to see what the next area has in store for you. Each area is completely distinct from the others thematically, ranging from a shopping center to a gym complete with a pool, a museum of natural history to a film studio. The variety is seriously rich throughout the entire game. What did leave us a tiny bit disappointed is the fact that all of these floors are not only distinct in terms of their aesthetic, but also in terms of their layout. Each floor in Luigi's Mansion 3 can only be accessed from the elevator, meaning the interconnectivity of the original game and suspicious dead ends are all gone, leaving only the essentially linear progression of floors in its place. It's only a small gripe, and one that probably won't bother most people playing given the sheer scale of the building and the gorgeous themed areas. And speaking of beauty, the entire game from head to toe is absolutely dripping with charm and polish. The animations are so good that not only do they look like they belong in an animated feature film, they frankly put similar looking games on the Switch to shame. Luigi's face displays a range of emotions we would have assumed would be impractical to put in a video game, but there they are. From the mild confusion and satisfaction of another elevator button gracefully screwing itself into place, to the look of timid horror at a colossal carnivorous plant, the facial movement in Luigi's Mansion 3 is an absolute master class. As for the visuals when things aren't moving, the screenshots and trailers that have been released previously just don't do this game justice. The textures, character models, and the lighting. Oh, oh, the lighting! It's easily one of the best looking games on the Switch to date, if not the best. There's this one moment when Luigi's torch casts light over a sand dune in one of the later levels that made us stop and just wonder how on earth they got this to look as good as it does on a console that's essentially a glorified mobile phone from two and a half years ago. And we mean nothing bad on the Switch because of that. We just know gameplay is the most important part of any game, but boy oh boy, did this game make us think twice about that stance. What's more, Luigi's Mansion 3 runs extremely well at a very solid 30 FPS, with only slight drops when there's a lot of action on screen. The environments are also littered with individual objects such as books, pizza boxes, jars, bottles, you name it and they all act separately within the physics engine, so to see such stable performance is fantastic, especially with the anti-aliasing and 1080p resolution taken into account. Multiplayer is also employed in various ways. You can enjoy a handful of Mario Party-like minigames on one console with up to seven other players in Screen Park, or you can delve into a randomly generated mini mansion with up to seven others online or locally in Scarescraper, if you and your friends have enough consoles and copies of the game. 
or you can even play the whole game with a friend in co-op mode on one system. The co-op campaign has player one controlling Luigi and player two as Gooigi, which results in a largely symmetrical experience, although the person at the helm of just regular Luigi is definitely more in control of things overall. While Screen Park is a fun little attraction, the main multiplayer offering is Scarescraper. You have to play cooperatively with friends to overcome various tasks in either a 5 or 10 floor hotel. This usually ends up involving catching ghosts or escorting toads to safety, which is surprisingly a ton of fun. We can't imagine you'll have much difficulty finding games online with random players at launch, but we wouldn't expect it to maintain any real long-lasting audience months down the road. Luigi's Mansion 3 is not only a graphical powerhouse and showcase for Next Level Games' unrivaled mastery of video game animation, it's also an immense helping of spooky fun as well. The amount of care and consideration poured into every facet of the game is abundantly clear, and it all results in one of the most enjoyable and attractive Switch titles of the year. It's also the undisputed high point of a franchise, which, following this sterling release, will hopefully get even more love and attention from Nintendo fandom, and the gaming community as a whole. We here at Nintendo Life give Luigi's Mansion 3 on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. If you'd like to read our full written review, you could find that and a ton of other information on Luigi's Mansion 3 over at NintendoLife.com.